Good day, gamers. I have a special package to unbox today. I will be unboxing the Retroid Pocket 2S. I know this console's been out for a while already, so this ain't gonna be like everybody else's review on this console. But this first video is just gonna be a basic unboxing, my initial thoughts, and the setup of how I will be playing this device. Here is the packaging. It appears to be the new packaging box. I think the older ones did have the 2S also on the label, but overall I do like the designs. <laughs> uh, I have it like an ax, strawberry, crates, skateboard, like a buster sword, some classic video game iconic iconography. I don't know how to say this word. <laughs> uh, it's got a little seal here. I'll try to gently, I don't know if I could peel this up. I just trimmed my nails. Yeah, we can peel it. I don't want to ruin this box. Hopefully I don't ruin it. Uh... I'm ruining it a little bit. Not terrible. Okay. Seal is off. Or wait. How does this thing work? Oh yeah, a little, little magnet. Fancy. Love it. The interface. And here she is wrapped in plastic in all her glory the retroid pocket 2s now i went with the indigo color and design because this is what looked most nostalgic to me one of my favorite handhelds growing up was the game boy advance and this is the color and style that i had in it um, so I was pretty excited that it had this size and color. Um, so initial thoughts, it also came with this, uh, USB-C charging cord. Who cares? This is the, what we came for today. Initial thoughts. It's like, honestly, the size I was expecting, um, it feels pretty good in the hand. cats are coming into my shot now <laughs> uh, yeah everyone like like all the other videos like I said I'm not gonna go through everything that you've already watched already the buttons are nice and clicky the d-pad smooth as butter that's enjoyable to press same with these it's a little bit of a travel but not I'm gonna have to just play some games and find out sticks there's like the only controllers I'm used to playing with normally is a uh, PS3 controller and PS4 controller. So the sticks are smaller than those, but they do feel comfortable on my thumbs. Um, so here she is. We're gonna get this set up. I do have a micro SD card I'm going to format. So let me get all the rest of the things set up and I'll show you how I set this device up so i did purchase the four gigabyte ram model that also has the 128 gigabyte internal memory so this should be more than plenty if you're just sticking with retro games i am going to also use this micro sd card in this card reader just so i can transfer games between devices in the future much much easier so let's just turn this thing on first and see what we're looking at. Ah. 
beautiful startup noise. It's almost a bit nostalgic of my favorite PS1 <laughs> uh, intro. It's and the, and the speakers just immediately, they're very, you could tell they're pretty good quality. Welcome to Retroid Pocket 2S. Pick English, and the first thing we'll do is connect to our internet. We will enable Google Play services, and it does come with a bunch of pre-installed apps if you choose. I will select a few of these, however, we are going to go to the actual websites for many of these, and I will leave a list in the description of all the emulators I feel like you should probably go get from the actual websites because they'll have the latest and more up-to-date uh, versions that should run more effectively on this device. Also, I think we want to get the latest version of RetroArch on their website. Many people will install this and it will run fine. So if you are a beginner with emulating, go ahead and just install most of these and watch many more YouTube tutorials on which emulators you're going to need for the game systems you want to play. Even got a Steam Link set up. So yeah, these devices are very cool. I'll just go ahead and get either SX2. I'm not going to play a lot of PS2 on here. That's kind of where this its limits are from my research I've done. So I think we should be able to get a couple games running and I will show that just to prove that it can. All right, select favorite launcher. We are going to begin with the Android launcher. It's just more simple to get to the websites and to download all the emulators that we're going to need to install for this device. So we'll go ahead and do Android launcher configuration complete. You can use the Retroid Pocket 2S now. Click complete. We will complete start. No, start. Okay. And there we have it. Okay, we are now into the Google Play Store. One we're gonna try out today is called Daijisho. And it's installed, let's open it up. View full screen. Got it. Welcome to Daijisho. Please add your platforms first. You can also select like I said earlier in the video, I'm not gonna go through every single detail with a fine tooth comb, but I will leave links in the description of other guides that I kind of watch to get myself familiar with it. I will say you probably will learn more just by downloading these apps yourself and navigating through them and learning what each thing does. But if you wanna, if, it's, if you're very new to it, go watch Joey's Retro Handhelds. He did a fantastic guide on the Daiji Show setup. Let's go into Chrome. The first thing I actually want to, the first thing we do want to install is RetroArch itself. So let's go over there. All right, so on RetroArch's website, cross platform, download stable or download nightly. Nightly is just their latest build. We're going to go ahead and do the nightly build. That'll be the latest up to date version of RetroArch for the Android devices. And it kicked me out. Why'd that happen? We have to update Chrome. Okay, let's do that first. It's important to make sure everything's up to date first. I should have probably started with that. So maybe after this is updated, we should go into our settings and make sure all of the software, make sure there's just no other updates that are missing as we initialize everything going forward. Yada yada. All right, well, well, let's just go ahead and do this now. RetroArch can be in our downloads folder. Go ahead and download. Download anyway. I like that it just kind of works and functions as an Android phone. <laughs> I've never got into Android phone emulation before. I like physical buttons. I wasn't you know, there's some games, touching's fine for a while, but this is this, this is where it's at. Installing. Let's open it up, see if it works. 
You need to grant access to read external storage, write external storage, okay. Allow. And it looks like we are in RetroArch's menu. Where we can now configure everything, and this will also link up to Daijisho. Uh, so let's go back here. I think we'll put the SD card in next. Maybe. Seems like only one side wants to come out. There we go. So I'm using a 128 gigabyte Samsung Evo card. Links in the description. They do make them bigger, 256. You shouldn't need more than that for these older games, but this is what we'll be putting games on. This might be the wrong way. Can't get it in. There. Tap to set up card. How will you use card? We're going to use it for portable storage. And it's ready to use. So I will go put my ROMs on that, and then we'll load into Show. This is where things went a little bit haywire. Now, after I formatted the micro SD card, I loaded all 120 some gigabytes of data onto it of my games and files when i then inserted it back into the slot it wanted me to format the card again and choose the the same choice if i want it to be internal storage or portable storage and if i were to choose either of those options it's going to wipe out all the files that i just transferred onto the sd card I'm like, this is very odd and strange, so I did it again. I chose portable storage, like you're supposed to, and loaded all my ROMs again. Once again, put it back into this device, and it gave me that same option to format. So at this point, I'm like, how the hell am I going to get games put on this device? There was even a point, too, that I did eject this card after formatting it, plugged it into my computer to try to put ROMs on it, and it was write only. So it switched the reading writing capability of the card after I formatted also. So it wasn't until the last time I put it in the S2, formatted under the portable device option, loaded my ROMs, put it back in this device, and it gave me that option again. But I was able to just like swipe away from that um and at first then i went to settings and storage just to see what was registering and if you do skip that option it won't even register that sd card so it was only showing the internal storage so i just ejected the card and injected it or rejected it or <laughs> reinserted it one more time and then it read it without that option so something weird and buggy was going on with this micro sd port or how it formats or something with this but eventually i got it to work with the use of an sd card and why that's important to me and for most people is if you want to transfer games 
you're, you're going to want to be able to have that on a portable SD card. Thankfully, you know, they do give you another option with a USB-C port, so you could just insert a micro SD card and then plug this directly into your computer. I don't like to do it that method, even though I know it's probably the easiest for most people and the quickest. So in case you also run into that SD card issue, I haven't heard very many people having that issue, but if you do, at least it gives you one other alternative so you can still get your games on. But overall, I still want a functioning SD port. So when I do change devices in the future or whatever, I want that option to be able to use my SD card slot. But anyway, just to prove that everything's functioning and running, <laughs> I was having a lot of fun with uh, one of my favorite Nintendo 64 games, Diddy Kong Racing, and uh, just to try out the joysticks because I'll do one last like overall my thoughts of, of this device because I want to more so share my experience other than the tech specs and like will it run this because handheld gaming is such a technological monument I feel like <laughs> some of us are just taking it uh, taken for granted or like sleeping on because when I was a kid being able to play N64 like I do my Game Boy games that blew my mind it really did like back then I was just only praying to get like one console system to have like backwards compatibility so we wouldn't have to keep buying the remastered games or like buying the same games a thousand different times and that's why I wrote an article too on my website if you want to check that out about just the evolution of gaming and like portable handheld gaming and like to be specific but how that kind of I can't even put these into words just how like mind-blowing it is to have multiple console capability all on a device that's smaller while well, I'm using my phone to record on but this thing weighs less than my phone like I am still impressed by how lightweight it is it's uh maybe slightly wider than my phone but not by much and my phone I have a Samsung 10 plus so it is a bigger phone um, but this is smaller than that and <laughs> I'm having so much fun being able to play a lot of my favorite childhood memories uh, just more portable and on the go and laying in bed or on a car ride or it's just it, it, it reintroduced this idea of gaming to me that back in the day you know I loved my Game Boy Advance but nothing had anything close on the PS2 or especially the PS3 when that came out so for me it was like yeah I think portables were dead and console gaming was just where it was at because you want it on a big TV and in a comfortable chair to relax on but now you can have it both ways <laughs> and that's just beautiful so this video is probably huge and long I know it was kind of a semi un informal unboxing but if you enjoy these more free loose stylized just gaming conversations uh, leave comments below what are your favorite games to play I would love to explore more. Um, if you have any questions that you want me to answer on the Retroid Pocket 2S, I'll do my best. I'm gonna work on one more video once I log more hours and play different consoles on this device. But um, but I'd like to answer anybody's questions in that video if you have any. And subscribe. See you on the next one. <laughs>